So now I want to discuss the appendix of the exercises where I've written some macros that you might find useful. Um, specifically, there are two macros, one that allows you to run buy-up, jack-up in a batch. Um, so this has the advantage that you don't have to concatenate your images, uh, and that can run either on 2D or 3D data sets. And then we have um, another version, uh, which can um, also do batch uh, analysis um, using images and associated regions of interest. So I'm going to show you what these macros look like, how you can modify them to do whatever you want. Um, so we're going to use for that these batch tests here. Um, and so you can see I have three images. These are uh, two channel images, uh, just like the ones we analyzed, but they haven't been concatenated. Uh, so just like the ones we analyzed in the rest of these exercises. Um, I also have for these 2D data sets, associated regions of interest that have the exact same name as the data set. It's just that the extension is .zip. So for example, if you take uh, this data and then you open the ROI that has the same name, it marks the cells in this data set. And finally, um, I have three 3D data sets where you can see this one has 17 Z slices, this one has 16, and this one has 18. So they have different uh, slices and um, you know, they're 3D uh, data sets. So um, the advantage of the macros is that you won't need to concatenate them. And concatenation is not possible when you have Z stacks with different uh, numbers of Z planes. And also it will organize all the reports uh, together um, so that you know you have them saved in case you want to access them. So let me show you how those macros work and how you might need to modify them for what um, for your data and and um, and different ways that you might want to run by up jackup. So the macros are uh, in the macros folder and they are called batch by up jackup or batch by up jackup with ROI. So if I drag batch by up jackup here, here's the macro. Um, you have to point it to uh, an input directory and it will run by up jackup with the conditions established here in this line. So if you want to run it under using different conditions, I think I've set it to Otsu uh, by default, you will need to change this line. How do you figure out how to change this line? Uh, let me show you how to do that. So if we go to batch tests, for example, we go to 2D data, I drag this. Let's say I want to run by up jackup. but I don't want to use you know, these settings. I want to use something different. So I don't want to use the settings that are in the macro. How do I figure out how to rewrite the settings? So you go to plugins, macro, record, and then we run by up jackup on this image. Let's say that we want to get Pearson's and we want to get a fluorogram in the report. So if I say, okay, this will do whatever. And then here, this line is the one that you need to replace in this line to run by up jackup how you want. Okay, so let me show you um, how this works. I'm just gonna clean up here. So we have a clean uh, slate. Uh, the, the macro will also do this cleanup as well, but I just, I just wanna start from a sort of a clean slate. I'm gonna close this. Um, and so now I'm gonna run this version. So in, 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 in the macro, I, I just put it by default with Otsu, but again, I've just shown you how you can change that. I'm gonna run it. Uh, and I'm gonna run it uh, on the 3D data just to show you that that is possible and to show you what the, what the reports look like. So if I select those data sets, it's gonna run. It's gonna take longer because they're bigger data sets. Okay, so it's finished. So what did it do once it finished? So you can see in the 3D data, it now has a results of analysis folder. And in that folder, it has the analysis log. So everything here, the results, so this, and then it has these image reports, which in this case are stacks. So you can see how this might be super useful if you wanna then validate and just make sure that uh, the th whatever it was doing makes sense. Okay, so that's just uh, one example of how to run 
this plugin. Um, and I hope that gives you a sense of how you might do it on your own data. Um, the other thing I want to show you is how to run the other plugin that associates regions of interest. So where you can do a batch where you have multiple images and then each of the images has a region of interest associated with it. To run that um, one, you're going to use this batch by Jacob with ROIs. Again, if you want to change um, how you run by Jacob, you need to change this line as I've showed you before. You want to use the recorder and then modify whatever it is that needs to be modified in that line. Uh, if we run this, in this case, I'm going to point it to um, first the data. And so I'm going to use this 2D data, 2D data folder. And then I want to point it to the ROIs, which have to be formatted in a particular way. So the ROIs have to be called, uh, have to have the same name as the data. So if I select that, you can see that it's done this for each image on the different ROIs in those ROI files. Okay, And over here, when you look at the results that were generated, there is one report per image per cell. OK, so this is a way that you can run. This also works in three dimensions, but uh, be aware that the regions of interest are sort of like a cookie cutter. So they will extend and have the same region of interest across the entire Z stack, meaning you will include either a lot of pixels that are empty, so where the cell sort of isn't um, kind of above or below the cell, or if there are piles of cell, you'll, cells, you will include other cells. So you know, use that with caution in the three-dimensional case. Um, but it, it certainly can be used. It, it will uh, do the same thing. Um, so hopefully you'll find those macros useful for your own projects.